It's time to count down this month's hottest board games, based on sales, crowdfunding, traffic, and news. Which 10 games have amassed momentum all month? Let's find out as we review this month's top 10 trending titles, all with Momentum. Hey, I'm Chaz Marler with Watch It Played, and the first game that we shine a light on this month is Dying Light, the board game, which built its buzz this month with a successful Kickstarter campaign that raised over a million dollars before being completed on March 20th. Based on the best-selling video game series, in Dying Light, the board game, up to four runners work together to survive wave after wave of the unrelenting zombie-like infected in the last human outpost left on Earth. The game aspires to provide a fresh take on the survival genre with an intuitive and easy-to-learn rule set. Additionally, it offers cooperative and true solo experiences, both which feature a sprawling modular city map, 3D structures, interactive aids and hazards, an impactful day and night cycle, and an adrenaline-fueled combat system based on parkour. But before society succumbs to the zombie hordes and we lose everything forever, let's try a game that features everything ever in the first game that helped make this episode possible, Everything Ever from Floodgate Games. Everything Ever is the party game that you have been preparing for your entire lifetime, whether you know it or not. It's true, you're ready. All those movies and sports, shows, music, food, people, and general bits of knowledge that you've been storing in your meaty mental memory, well now can finally be used to save the day. Just draw a category card and say a thing that matches that category, such as every breakfast cereal or every Star Wars character. Go around the table with each player adding an item, take a penalty if you can't, change up the category to one you think you know better, or score a bonus for coming up with an answer that matches multiple cards. Look, you don't need to know everything. You just need to know one more thing than your friends do. Follow the link in this video's description to find everything ever, everywhere, wherever quality gaming experiences are made available through the products that they sell. The exploration and adventure of the game Seventh Continent returns now when the recently released Seventh Citadel, an all new cooperative journey adventure game from the Seventh Continent's same creative team at Sirius Pulp. Explore the collapsing lands freely by gradually unveiling the board using numbered terrain and event cards, interacting with the environment, conversing with its inhabitants, and building a city that will renew the land. The Seventh Continent was immensely popular. I don't need to tell you that. It was all over the place through multiple Kickstarters and reprints and just boy howdy, people love this game. It's great. So I imagine that lots of gamers out there are also going to be eager to dig into this sequel. Now, the game is currently in the process of shipping to its Kickstarter backers, posting on March 6th that more than 25,000 backers have already received their pledges. And for those who aren't among the 33,000 that backed it, the game is also listed as coming soon on the Sirius Pulp website. So sooner or later, the Seventh Citadel will be sitting on store shelves. Do you believe in coincidences? Because coming in at number eight for a second month in a row is Earthborn Rangers, a customizable cooperative card game for one to four explorers set in the wilderness of the far, far future. Players build a deck that reflects their ranger's interests, personal history, and personality. Then, as they explore the open world, their own story takes shape, augmenting their deck with improved equipment, refining their skills, and the memories that they will collect along their journey. Earthborn Rangers seemed to grow in popularity exponentially over this past month, thanks, in part, to not only the successful completion of a crowdfunding campaign to fund a second printing of the game and several of its expansions, but also a glowing review by the channel Shut Up and Sit Down. That always gives the game an extra little nudge of momentum. If you're interested in Earthborn Rangers, well, their most recent game found campaign was accepting late pledges as of the time of this recording, so there still may be time to get on board to explore its upcoming second printing. A neat little game that I was recently introduced to at Aircon earlier this month lands in spot number seven. 
The Veil of Eternity, a card drafting game all about creating card collections that accumulate in compelling card combos. In the game, players hunt various monsters and spirits to tame them as minions. Some creatures have effects that are triggered right away, while others go off at the end of each round. And exploring the synergies between the cards that you collect is not only a lot of fun, but is also the key to victory. Now, this game totally captured my imagination, leaving me to ponder what other strategies and combo effects I could pull off the next time I get to play it. Thusly, I can totally see why this game found its way into the top 10 this month, because honestly, this has been one of my favorite new games that I have played this year. And oddly enough, the game that I had a similar experience with last year returns to the countdown as well, thanks, in part, to its recent crowdfunding campaign for a new expansion. Thunder Road Vendetta shifted back into the gear with a Kickstarter for Carnival of Chaos, an upcoming addition to the game that offers new ways to play it. Rabid racers roll their cars into the arena, collecting wild party favors, powerful super weapons, and precious, precious scrap along the way. This expansion also adds support for a fifth player. And unlike regular Thunder Road, the winner of the Carnival of Chaos is the one who survives with the most scrap at the end. There's no finish line, only smoke, fire, bedlam, and twisted metal. It's like Thanksgiving in board game form. And spot number five is Galactic Cruise, where the goal is to build and launch space-bound shuttles to send guests on luxurious cosmic vacations. As a supervisor of this company, you will be expected to not only build these shuttles and satisfy your guests, but also to help the company thrive by enhancing the company network, inventing new technologies, and growing its workforce. To accomplish all these things, you'll acquire ship blueprints, construct those shuttles, attract guests, and build developments, all of which ebb and flow with the actions of other players. You know what Galactic Cruise is doing? Galactic Cruise is currently running its crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter through April 3rd, but it's already rocketed past its initial fundraising goal, having earned over $600,000 as of the time of this recording. And while Galactic Cruise's Kickstarter appears poised to end in glory, Back here on Earth, another way to achieve fortune and glory is with the other game that helped make this episode possible, Fortune and Glory, the cliffhanger game from Flying Frog Productions. Oh, that's right. The wildly popular pulp adventure board game, Fortune and Glory, is back with a brand new revised edition. This new edition contains over a decade's worth of polish and errata, a streamlined rulebook, and an even more compact box. Meaning that this game and its components finally fit snugly on gamer shelves. <laughs> oh, thank you! Thank you, Flying Frog. This is the ultimate version of the fast-paced game of high adventure, vile villains, edges your seat danger, and 1930s pulp movie action taking place as you travel the globe in search of ancient artifacts, fending off danger and villains at every single turn. Strap on your boots and goggles and grab your trusty revolver because the race for fortune and glory has begun and there's no prize for second place. This new edition releases on April 18th and can also be pre-ordered right now directly from the Flying Frog online store, which you will find a link to in this video's description. Welcome now to the Not a Surprise to Anyone Zone, today featuring Doom. Uh, specifically, Dune from 2019, published by Gale Force 9. And I'm, I'm not saying that there's a lot of Dune games out there to keep track of, but there are enough Dune games that this particular one, first introduced in 1979, was reintroduced in 2019 as this game, named Dune, which itself is reintroduced as Dune, a game of conquest and diplomacy, in 2021. A lot of games named Dune. Now, regardless, Dune, in all its various board game flavors, pits sparring factions against each other as they fight for control of the planet Arrakis and its coveted herbs and spices. Dune's reappearance in this month's top 10 is no doubt due not only to the varied and highly rated games associated with the IP, but also by the release of the movie Dune Part 2 on March 1st, both of which result in a grand performance for the game this month. But an even grander performance, perchance, was achieved by the game in spot number three this month, El Grande, first published back in 1995, and now returning with a snazzy new edition. 
In El Grande, medieval Spanish lords tussle for control of various regions by strategically placing knights that they draft into their court. Controlling regions scores points, and at the end of the game, the player with the highest score becomes the new ruler of medieval Spain. That's all there is to it. That's all it takes. This new edition of El Grande retains the original rules, but also includes two new mini expansions and additional action cards that weren't available in the original version of the game. These things weren't original. Nope. Very poorly constructed sentence that he had written just hours before. So let's try that again. These items weren't available in the original version of the game, making this edition even a bit more grande still. Still not the most grammatically correct sentence in the world. But let's move on to number next. Ostia returns now to the countdown in this one's second highest spot in which one to four players lead a fleet to explore the ocean, trade, and develop ports. Using a Moncala system, resources are produced and loaded onto ships, enhancing buildings and making improvements to players' personal boards. When Ostia first appeared on our list last summer, we mentioned that a big expansion for it was in the works. Well, now that expansion has come to Kickstarter in a campaign that's currently running through March 26th, which will finance not only a reprint of the base game, but also a new Pirates expansion, where powerful pirates await players when they leave the safety of the Mediterranean Sea. In preparation, players must collect weapons and soldiers to prevent being plundered. The expansion introduces some additional obstacles to overcome, but those who can do it expect to earn enough income to make the whole thing worth the risk. And based on this Kickstarter's performance, getting in on this game's second printing and expansions also seem to be worth the risk as well. And boy howdy, doubling the momentum of any previous game on this month's list is the announced special edition of Puerto Rico 1897, which isn't even scheduled to begin its crowdfunding campaign until the third quarter of this year. Now, this edition of the game is being produced in tandem by two different publishers, Ravensburger and Awakened Realms, who are hoping to, quote, craft an exquisite experience that will elevate Puerto Rico to the highest standards. In the game Puerto Rico, players take different roles, including industrious builder, clever trader, stalwart captain, opportunistic prospector, and more. Check this out. These roles, they help the other players bolster their wealth and reputation as they build and govern their island. That's what they do. This newly announced version of the game isn't even expected to ship until 2025, but when it does, its publishers are hoping to provide players with an extremely polished high-end special edition. But for now, we've reached the tail end of this month's countdown. But fear not, stalwart viewer, you can click here to continue on to our most recent Board Game Buyer's Guide episode, where you will find two dozen more board games that are available right now on store shelves, including new releases and restocks, a roundup of retail recommendations, and a few surprises. We'll see you over there, and thanks for watching.